Órale. You know, live on the line, we have none other than producer extraordinaire, Ernie G. What up, Ernie G? What's going on, my man? How you doing today? Hey, man. Welcome to the Sancho Loco Show, man. You know, um, a lot of people uh, are wondering what you've been up to nowadays, so I thought I'd reach out to you, brother. I mean, people don't know this, but me and Ernie, I, actually, when I was a, a, you know, a little bit more of a youngster, me and Ernie used to work together for a little bit on a few tracks, and... Um, Believe it or not, we were introduced by um, Eddie. Eddie, and then you know my sister had some mutual f friends that we got introduced to, and so yeah. I've I've known Ernie for for a while. I mean, we 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 don't for a while. Yeah, we, we go way back, like babies and pacifiers. Huh? Yeah, man, and and it's cool, man, that we kept in touch all these years, man, because um, you know, I'm doing this radio thing now, and what other what better guy to reach out to than one of the persons that I look up to as, as far as, uh, you know, production goes and knowledge of the game, man, than, than you brother. I mean, um, let every know, let everybody know what you've been up to, man. Man. Well, I've been doing like everybody else doing the nine to five. Got had to get a job, you know, pay them bills. Yeah, Nothing man. Spectacular. Same old thing, man. I mean, you know, a lot of people want to front if they're doing big things, but, uh, I just kept it real, man, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, so, so that's about it. So, um, but, but I still, you know, I'm still, I, you know, I still have love for the music. So with uh, with um, technology, we were able to, you know, now you can have a laptop and a, a mic and headphones, and you're good to go. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, like when we were recording, it was it was you had a lot of outboard gear, so you were actually recording off of a, uh, I believe it was, inch. yeah, it was like a two inch man two inch and and uh, yeah, like the old school way, analog tape, and you know, but. Uh, you know, uh, things change, and uh, you got to move with the times or to get left behind. That's right, man. And and a lot of you know cats. I mean? There's a lot. Of, I mean, that's that was one of my other questions I was going to ask you. There's a lot of cats in the game. Like a lot of, you see, the game changed. Like you know, back in the days when Latinos or Chicanos joined the rap game, you know, they were kind of put in a lane, and then you know, it was a black and brown thing where you know the blacks the blacks kind of had you know control of the industry, and then Chicanos made their way up into their own lane, and so. It's it's always pretty much been you know the two cultures. Now it's like it's it's kind of gotten weird. Now I mean not 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 in a bad way, but all the lanes are open now, and and everybody's like a one hit wonder. And production has changed. I mean when me and you were around, you know it was about lyrics and and you know content. That's changed too. So what are your thoughts on you know uh, how the rap game has changed since you've seen it? Well, I mean, I can't be, uh, I can't like really be a hater about it because t everything moves on. What are you supposed to do? I'm going to sit back and be the old man and be like, oh, well, back in our days, it was better. It was what it was. I mean, now you have, you do have technology, but with that said, it's like our attention span and like the quality sometimes it's not as, it was different. The vibe's different. Like now you can go to your boy's beat or get, a, I mean, your boy's house and, and, and uh, make you know just download bunch of beats right. from wherever and people just rap on top of it i mean we had you know not necessarily us but we try to achieve like the million dollar sound with the masterings and everything to and then at the end of the day you're just gonna listen to them on a five pair a five dollar a pair of earbuds you know right and so like like it's at the end of the day it's like that's just one aspect of it but but I mean, and then the the flip side about it is, look what we're doing now. Like, you're able to transmit to the whole world now. You know what I mean? Right. So in that way, is like, it's more opportunities for people, but not necessarily everybody's great just because you made a, you know, how many how many of you guys know, like, how many of you guys know uh, somebody that's, oh, that guy raps. Oh, uh, my homeboy's a rapper. Oh, my homeboy's a rapper, too. I mean, back in the days, dude, I was, the internet was getting your car drive to wherever you got to drive and a lot of times it wasn't like it was a waste of time half of the time but you did it because you believed in something you believed that that's going to happen and you know you got to get disappointed a couple of times until you just believe you just believe you can do this you can do this and somehow it manifests itself and how did, I mean, how you, did know, you like when you were coming up how did you get discovered like how were you like i mean because everybody knows when you know when somebody gets a deal, they get recognition. And I know that you were assigned with Scanless. And um, did you get? 
uh, discovered by Steve or was it by somebody else? No, I mean, in a nutshell, I know we don't have all the time in the world, but in a nutshell, I mean, you know, it wasn't like I just made a rap and we got discovered, we made a record and the rest is history. No, I mean, it's the same old cliche story, dude. I was a DJ mm -hmm. for a long time. I mean, I DJed in my hood. Yes, I did all that. And then next thing you know, I got a little bit curious, like, how do you make, no, I think what it was is I, I was like, I want to scratch on a record. I want to have my name on a record. And, and that happened. Some girl named uh, Peaches had a record, just independent stuff. Okay. Then from there, you're just like, I kind of want to make a record. Then you meet up with, with some dude that knows some dude, like, hey, I got this guy named Frank V. And, you know, then that takes time. It wasn't overnight. It wasn't over a year. I mean, and then you meet, you meet, so you got to somehow, we met up with this dude that had an SB to a hundred. We already kind of had the idea. And even then I didn't know about bars. Frank didn't know about bars. We were just right. Rapping. Yeah. It, you know what I'm saying? You don't understand. We didn't know about bars. We, we didn't know about tempo. We didn't, uh, we just knew that this sounded dope. You know, when you yeah. had, we had cassettes. So, so, you know, we had, there's a, there's a demo, which I doubt anybody has. I don't think I don't have it. Um, make a long story short, dude. So we met up with like our manager, John Barunda. Mm -hmm. Um, he knew about pressing records. I mean, I didn't know nothing about pressing records. Right. He pressed the records. We went, we, we actually had to go get a studio, uh, you know, finance the money through my cousin, rest in peace, a uh, big chill. That's the first record that came out on big chills, uh, record label. If you got the 12 inch or the original cassette with the Mexican flag on it, that it was, was the original one? record. That's the original. I think that one has like more bounce to the ounce on it. If you guys pay attention, the original song Mexican Power has more bounce to the ounce. No way! Um, I got to get that one, man. Yeah, it might be on the internet. Uh, I, actually, I have the twelve inch of the the one from Scanless, but uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason the reason that one never had more bounce to the ounce, and it was definitely different. It didn't have the same break beat that the original one has, and it, it wasn't. I don't believe it was as fast. It's not as fast as the original one because at the time we didn't know if you listen to the original one i'm like damn you know this this thing is fast yeah i didn't realize how fast it is. but you don't realize a lot of things and sometimes that's the beauty that's why i don't knock nobody that's trying to rap because i mean look who who, who would have thought that mumble rappers nowadays uh, who, 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 yeah yeah happening. people like it you, you see my philosophy on thing is that Sometimes it's a bad thing because now I know all like the engineering aspects of yeah. being being on a, you know behind the scene. Like I know that oh the vocal has too much reverb, the kick oh it's a little bit muddy. Oh you should have oh that I don't like the way the kick sounds. The snare is not high enough. Oh man, the, or the snare is not high. You know it's too low. His vocals are too low. They put too much reverb on it. But the average fan, the fans that are your truly your fans. They either gonna like your record or not. They're gonna be like, man, that sounds badass, and that's all you care about. But when you start dibbling into the mixing and you gotta master it, I mean, I didn't know none of that stuff. I didn't know about mixing and mastering. Yeah, you're just like that sounds good. Yeah, and you would you just know? pump it out, right? And you pump it out in a way, and that's what ha what's happening like right now. I might, not, I might like, you know, be like, ah, that's, uh, you know, I might be like, well, you know, uh, I already know how it was made. This is so I'm listening. With, with like like engineer ears, you know what I mean? Right. And so, and you know, a lot of people have home studio you know, now, so they got the home setup and they're pumping out beats through Reason or Fruity oh yeah, Loops. Fruity Loops. Yeah. 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 And I mean, I can't compete with that. That wasn't my era. I didn't. I didn't. That's not what I. I didn't do those. You know, double time beats. Right. I mean, I can I can I do them? Sure, but I'm just gonna sound like everybody else. So like people that are doing double time beats. Right. Or doing the fruity loops. I mean, that's why they have to put like DJ I don't know on the beat, you know, <laughs> like a tag on it. Because yeah. it also and then DJ Muster comes and he makes his beats and then everybody else is trying to sound like DJ Mustard. So I mean I'm not afraid to say it, but I'm like, bro, if you're not DJ Mustard or yeah. you, if you didn't get a beat by DJ Mustard was like, Hey, hey, on it. What? Why are you trying to sound like I, DJ I'm Mustard? Not, I, yeah. Yeah, why, I mean, why are you guys going to sound? And that's what's happening. Now the style is sound like everybody else and then sound like everybody else. So, but I'm not hating. I'm just like, hey, that wasn't me. That wasn't us. And I guess everybody has their time to shine. Uh, do you, do I know you think, that, uh, you know, no, do you think the old school is going to, the old school funk sound is going to come back or you think that's done with? 
No, I, I, well, now I understand why, like these people that own record labels back in the day, they keep your masters because they know that they're going to come back around. So they, so when it comes back around, like say Biggie and Tupac starts playing or whatever, they know that it's just in case they own your stuff. You know, that's why I was like, yeah, I, I think it'll come back around. Maybe in another five, maybe 10 years. Who knows? I don't know how it goes. You know, somebody right. definitely, somebody is definitely controlling the sound bro like somebody's really like it's it's deep i think it's i mean at least that's my theory like right somebody up there says no more funk no more pe no more public enemy no more because rap had a message right at one time right like rage against yeah, the machine even, and, public yeah, enemy ice cube death certificate oh, they were telling you stories like listen to death certificate anything even nwa was telling you stories like they were telling you what's going on on the streets yeah it was Nowadays, like real talk yeah, it was like now nowadays even listen to proper those Mexican power. Yeah. We're telling you stories, dude. I don't hear everybody's now talking about how they're turning up and they're making all this money, but yet you still you don't have a car. I know a lot of rappers that are rolling and doing that, but they don't even have a car. No, I'm not kidding you, you man. Like, like when Yeah, I'm not when, kidding. When um when Incognito was putting together album, we got we had a few features on there and I'm not kidding you, man. We were seeing um and I I'm not gonna drop no names. But we were seeing people get rides to the studio, and it was a big front, man. Like people were fronting back then. It was MySpace, so people were fronting yeah. on MySpace, and it's like it's it looked good on the internet, but in the reality was different when you you saw these rappers that had quote unquote deals. Yeah, man, it was. But, it, and, and and to a certain point, I'm like, well, it's cool. I mean, we see that in TV. We see all these Rambos and all these ninjas and all these guys flying through the sky and it's not real neither it's entertaining so right. as long like i could say rick ross you know rick ross i like his music you know even though we know he was a see i think where they mess up is where they start lying and they say no no i wasn't no 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 see just say it man i was a ceo but you know i'm, I'm rapping now and yeah. i still i still, you know i like his music but but um you know at least you know the first couple cds and stuff and and we know he's a CEO, you know, correction officer or whatever he was. We know he was. and But then, you know, it, it is what it is to each his own now. Like, I'm not here to judge nobody. I'm like, you guys do what you, what you guys think. Because at the end of the day, dude, I believed in what I did when I when I did Mexican Power. Right. So I believed in it. I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, if I listen to it, I'm sure I'm going to find something I don't like. Like, maybe I could have mixed it better. Maybe I could have mastered it louder. I didn't really know, like, believe it or not, I knew how to make the beats, but then mixing them and getting that sound. But then again, we didn't have that million dollar board or, or the million dollar engineer like Dr. Dre. Not to say that, that that's what makes your sound, but it definitely contributes to that sound. You know what I mean? And right. you having probably the best, you know, it's a lot of everything. dude. So it is what it is. Whatever you got, whatever you believe in, believe in. Uh, make it happen. So, you know? so, 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 go. Is that is that the message for all the the upcoming rappers, the youngsters in the game, trying to? Because I, I do see a lot of that. I do see a lot of like youngsters in the rap game, and they they exactly what you said is exactly what they do. They find an artist and they latch onto them, like whether it's Drake or Nicki Minaj, and you know they try to be like these spinoffs of of them. And you know, I don't know if they they do it um, consciously. Or they just they're you know in love with that music so much that it it you know it gets incorporated into their creative process. So, what do you think is a good message for you know upcoming youngsters that are doing it? Yeah, well, I, I just think that if they really believe in what they're doing, if they really believe that, they have to go with that. Don't worry what I think about it. Don't because I'm not I'm not I hey I, by any means I'm not look at. Yeah, I did something, and it was a different time. Right. And no matter what you tell these kids, like, yeah, back then we were doing this, they'll probably just nod their head and be like, yeah, 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 but they're going to keep it pushing. Right. You know, they're like, they're not living in our time. It's like somebody telling me about Frank Sinatra. Right. And, and you know, the Red Pack. I'm going to be like, I appreciate that because I know they were like, in, in, you know, I know they were they were badass in their time. I'm, But... Have I sat there and said, let me go listen to their song? I mean, I have. I have, but you know what I'm trying to say. I'm right, right. I know what like, you're trying to say. You, like, you're, you're trying to say people should make their own lane and, and do their own thing. Yeah. Right. Make their own thing and and, and, and be different. Don't, don't. I mean, there's some stuff that is definitely different. Like even all the mumble rappers, all those uh, 
little yachty, little trippy, or little this and that. And uh, and I, I understand why it hits because sometimes that music is so <laughs> I want to say it's so retarded, dude. Like so retarded that like, and then after a while it just get they program it into your brain. You hear it, you hear it, you hear it, and it and it's mostly. The younger gen, it ain't like us, you know, or at least uh, me. It ain't me that I'm like, damn, I'm going to go buy that. I'm all, oh, you know, but I understand. It's all program. It's all it's all entertaining, dude. They're doing it for m- money. Some, I'm sure they believe. Look at look at the trends that's going on. You got pink hair with, with uh, you skinny know. Skinny like jeans. and Skinny jeans. And, and uh, what am I? I'm not, I, I don't know what to say, man. I'm like, you guys do what you do. And. We still, we're still gonna, we're gonna be like the old guys, like you know how they still have like the old, you'll have uh, the oldie shows, and people still go to see the oldie shows, right? But it's not mainstream anymore. You'll still see like, oh, I'm gonna go check out Brent Wood, or they are having this at the amphitheater every year. They have them, and people, our generation, go, we go, and, and to us, that was our music. Not only that, here's what happens. Uh, in the '90s, when we were growing up, we have our music, right? So. Right. That music becomes a time machine for you, dude. So when you hear that Tupac from 1995 or that Death Row era, what does it do for you? It takes you back to when you were doing something. You know what I mean? When it was live for you. When you when you didn't have that house payment. When you didn't have that mortgage payment. When you didn't have that car payment. When you were just rolling around with your, with your homies or, or being with that girl or somebody, you know? So, like, wh- whoever's listening to today's music – Maybe twenty years from now, they're hearing like, "Oh man, I remember," you know. So it's so, gonna be—it's a time. It's a to like a time stamp, like the same thing it is on uh, on your Instagram. So it's a timeline or or Twitter. You know, your Twitter feed is a timeline. You look that's back, true. Like, you know it, what I'm saying? And that's how it is. It's all recorded information, man. Part exactly. of the system. So, Part of the system. Um, you know. Let's um. Let me ask you this, man. Out of I, I know you've done a lot of tracks, "Feed Me Hyena," "Mexican Power," "Ghetto Baseball." What are some of the – what is one of the favorite tracks that you've done? Like, which, which is one that you've enjoyed the most? I, I think – I mean, like like Underground, I would say definitely Ghetto Baseball was one of them. Another one was One Deep. That was on the second album. We're at it again. Um, that one – but then you had, like, Something to Bump. I think Something to oh, Bump. Oh, yeah, that was – I want to say – That's yeah, one of my favorites, that, dude. Yeah, I think um, – I think – did you that, do that beat, or did yeah. did you like hit, did you make that beat? I made that beat. Yeah, I made that, that was beat. dope, dude. That one is but dope. That that's a that's a song from the Barcades. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and the funny thing was that that back in the days, dude, you didn't have like drum kits. Like some of you producers out there know what I'm talking about because now you can go to the internet and get a drum kit. Which means, <laughs> yeah, you can download like, it. Download it. Back in the days, Mark, we were. I had to take a record and listen to like the Mary Jane girls, like Mary Jane, and then you would go and try to get the cleanest snare in there, and you oh, would have man. to sample it. You would have to sample it, and you would have to truncate the snare. Uh, and it all depended like how you truncated it, how you pitched it down. Then you would save it on a disc, on a floppy disc, man. Wow! I mean, like so, you had tons of those just, lying around. Yeah, yeah. You we, so anyway. So then you would have those drums. So what happened was that I didn't like none of my sounds. I never liked none of my sounds. I never liked them. Were, like, were you your worst my, critic? You were like yes, your worst critic? Yes. Yeah, I think I'm, I think right now I'm barely starting to like, okay, let me hear Mexican power. And I, really? And now because it's been, yeah, let me listen to it. Let me see what, what is it that people like? What is it that is different now? Like, you know, you're, we're talking what, 25 years, maybe 26 years. Oh yeah. You know? So, so I'm like, Damn, I, I kind of now I became kind of like a fan now because I kind of forgot what. That's awesome. What, yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm listening to it. I'm like, damn, Frank B. Frank B. is a it's a hell of a, a storyteller. Frank B. is telling stories. You know what, but, dude? But you know, just on that note, leading up to because I knew I was going to call you today. Leading up yeah. to this, man. You know, I went back. I always do my homework and I always revisit a lot of things. So I went back and I listened to a lot of the songs and. I, I had the same thought too, man. I was like, you know what? Frank is probably most one of the most underrated rappers. He's he's a great storyteller, man. And I honestly not to not because he's because people like you kinda know me. Me and Frank haven't talked and you know, I've talked to him like 
maybe four years ago, but we were never like best friends. You know, right. like people think you're best friends. No, we got together because I was making beats and I was a DJ uh, in the neighborhood. And then um, all of a sudden, somebody, Frank, I think, came from Texas, man. That's why Frank doesn't sound like the rest of like, rest of these other Latinos. Like, he, he doesn't sound like Simon, homie. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, he doesn't sound like that. If you listen to Frank, he, he, he kind of was influenced by classic rock. It, I, so yeah. he has a lot of phrases to classic rock. So that's what, that fusion right there. And it, it took me a while to understand why does this guy sound different than the regular life? Because when you say Latino, the first thing is like, let me put a bandana on. Let me put on right. some clothes. Yeah. That's our lifestyle. You know, like I grew up in that stuff too, but I wanted to be different. I want to be like, man, I don't want to be, hey, don't, don't go around saying, um, it's like, hey, homie, I'm from, you know, Santa Monica. Yeah. I, I remember telling Frank, like, hey, homie, you know, like, just relax. They're going to know where, they're going to want to know where we're from. It's even, like, don't even say where we're from. Just say the West Side, you know. Yeah. Two subliminals in there, but only around the neighborhood. They would know what they're talking about, you know. So, so it be, we became more like, I wanted to be liked by everybody, not just by the neighborhood. Right. Want to be or want to be a rapper and just your neighborhood and make him even more enemy. So to me, it was like I was thinking way ahead. Like, nah, Frank, well, don't do that. Well, you know, that or, was a smart you know, move because I think everybody from all walks of like every Latin or Chicano guy, you know, had that tape, and they had even even neighborhoods probably that you didn't get along with had that exactly. tape. Oh yeah, I just I just did like a little um, interview. On, I don't know if you guys seen on the news, there's like a mural in Santa Monica that's kind of depicting the Native Americans. It's in City Hall. Oh, that's and dope. And so we're doing a documentary on Lowriders with uh, Charlie Chacon. Uh, it's, I think it's West Side documentary on uh, I saw IG. the can, I saw the trailer yeah. on that. We'll play that in a bit. I, I saw the trailer on that. Exactly. That so to make um, – I, I fell off a track. Uh, what was I going to say? You, were, you so, were talking about the mural and then the documentary? Uh, yeah, but it was leading up to something. Uh, anyways, um, yeah. So, I, I, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say. Um, so you know, Frank, you you uh, kept in contact with Frank about four years ago, but you guys weren't really you know that close. But people were you know listening to your guys's music from from everywhere, and uh, to me, I always thought that you guys stood apart from everybody else because I mean there was a Kid Frost at that time. There was yes. li- there was lighter shade of brown at that time, and to me, yeah, t- lighter shade of brown. They sounded a little bit more poppy to me. Yeah, they were on the pop side, definitely on the pop side. And there was a couple, uh, uh, you know, uh, disses towards them because that's what the that's what it was back then. Like, oh man, you know, and you're younger, so so. And I think people, if you noticed, I noticed that. I noticed that nobody really like. Nobody helped us out, man. I think they, now that I look at it, I think they kind of feared Frank, like, because they knew Frank was good. So, like, if it was Kid Frost, yeah, he would hang out there, but I think Kid Frost was just trying to, trying to just uh, check out his energy. You know what I mean? Like, damn, right. how's this guy, do? you know, just to be friends with us. Because we, we were real, dude. We were real. The stuff was real. We weren't faking nothing there. It was real. And I think there I needs think to happened, be, there needs know? to be more of that going on. I mean, there needs to be artists like, you know, I don't know if you know, um, who Cap G is and um, oh yeah 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 I I still keep my uh, uh, ear to the street I'm I was trying to be you know I need to stay with the times yeah. yeah Cap G you know Cap G he was working with the uh, what is that King Little G uh, I believe they did a track yes yeah I believe they did a track and I think they're trying to break that barrier because because that was part you know like you said I think people hung around back in the days but nobody you know really kind of grabbed you by the arm and said hey listen. Let's let's do a song there. Let's make a movement, and I think there needs to be a movement made for you know our culture to break through our culture, and that's what I liked about that documentary you, you, that link you sent to me, man. I was like, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you yeah. know, that yeah. tells a story right there. And it was it was and, and and what happens is this guy's from Culver City. That's like um like you know that's the rival enemy. But then you have West LA, and you you kind of know about that yeah. West LA, and that's like the number one rival enemies, but. Hoover City is like a little bit further that way, and and it's, it's like politics, and it was crazy. It's like then you have Venice, 
But then it's like Venice and Culver City have the and the guy making this documentaries from uh, from Culver City, you know, and not necessarily that he's from like fully like active, but it's just that you know if you have family from there, what are you gonna do, man? Be like, no, nah, let me go. You know, you were born and raised in the city that yeah. you have no fault in, and um, all of a sudden you got to ride with who you riding with, and and that's how it was. The, the thing with me was like I got into music, so, but I knew everybody in the hood. Everybody in the hood, like, oh, Ernie, what's up, Ernie? What's up, Ernie? So I was, I didn't feel no threat. I didn't feel like, oh, I, I need to get jumped in. I didn't feel like, oh, I, I better give me some tattoos. That wasn't me. I was like, I'm doing music. Yeah, you I'm were represent for my hood. Like you look at the videos, everything was filmed in the hood. Right. Everything was filmed in Santa Monica because that was my way of telling you, look, I'm actually probably more down than you are just because you have this and that, you know what I mean? Cause yeah. Every, every, every hood got the lane. Right. But right. then uh, somebody from say, or it's kind of be like, Hey, hey uh, check this out. I know, I know your homeboy from so-and-so or somebody might say, Hey, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I might tell you, I, I met, I met your homeboy from so-and-so and you might be thinking in your brain, like, Oh, that's really not my homie. But, yeah, you know, he's from my side, so I'm, I'm not going to say anything. So, you know, we all have the same thing in common. It's just only if we can get along, that would be. Imagine that. That's why we need that uh, album, Mexican Power. Yeah. We yeah. need that album, Mexican Power, so we can unite our people. Listen to Mexican Power. Look how, tell me, and for all, anybody and, else. No, I mean, all the, all the, anybody that's listening that hasn't heard that song, you need to go hear that song because I know that times are different. You know, the young people, yeah, there was a gap, there was a gap there. And so if, if you're a youngster, you, you, you want to hear a really cool song, you know, that uplifts you listen to Mexican power by a uh, proper dose. Um, well-produced man. I know we got to get, we got to get you in the studio here one day, man. And, uh, oh, man, you know, just yeah. a, a hop and a skip away. Yeah. And really, really do this live, man. Cause I, I really think you're, uh, dropping some knowledge on, on a lot of cats and, and I appreciate the phone call, man. Um, what are you working on now? Are you, are you working with uh, any new artists uh, now? Uh, if people like, you know, now it's like a social media thing. If people want to know anything or even if they want to ask me, I'm actually pretty active on there. I'll, I'll answer people. Some people ask me questions, you know, they DM me or something. Yeah. What's your on, social on media? Instagram. Uh, usually the one I'm, I'm heavy, heavy on is just, uh, Instagram. Cause it's just, I just want to keep it to one. And it's, uh, Proper, just how how the record is proper underscore, and uh, D O S proper dos. Hey man, you know, so proper uh, underscore D O S at, at at Instagram. Um, and actually that's that's all. Oh, well, I have a Twitter that you know Twitter was like I, I'm sure it's still active, but I don't use it anymore. But it's still active. Once in a while, I'll go check it. You know what? Um, I, you know phone. what? One thing I don't like about Twitter is there's no visuals. You know what I mean? Like it's just like a it's like a feed. Well, I think I think now there is, dude. Like now there is. You can put a video and all that. It's just I think I think I might jump back there. It's just more like it I think that's more like for a little bit more like just to, to tweet out. Look, like your boy uh uh, uh Donald Funk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh you know, he's tweeting. It's more like a like me if I just have something on mine I tweet it. Like I might go back and and, and restart that. I don't know. It just depends. Just, you gotta and, just depends you know, on the time, man. That's that's all. It depends. It depends. But if anybody got any questions they want to know, man, just just hit the Instagram. You hit know, the Instagram. You heard it. Yeah. Proper, Proper dose, dose, man. Underscore D O S. Proper you underscore D O S. Proper underscore yeah. D O S. You you have a website nowadays, or are you pretty much on the Insta? Uh, you know what? Like my whole thing is, uh, I think YouTube, and I'm not too active. I need somebody actually to run it. You know, yeah. if anyone knows how to run, it's high cal high. high is high caliber exclusive or high caliber records i don't even know but the, you'll find it by by just typing in proper those on youtube and you'll you i mean if you know you'll know that okay this has to be his page because it has high caliber high caliber uh records or high caliber exclusive i think on there one of those two because i use high caliber exclusive so uh or high caliber records so anything with high caliber record and i've done a lot of stuff i, I did some stuff with too high uh that's in 2000 and so and then from there i i, I jumped into i have a nephew is, is damn good too he, he's actually done a few uh songs with uh king little g and drummer boy oh cool know, uh, from from 909 i, I did like a mixtape but you know what's what's your nephew's that, what's your nephew's name oh young young chapel okay young cool Chapo. and um yeah and then they done some stuff and i done some uh with loco negro if you go to latin what is it latin beast tv on YouTube, Latin Latin Beast T 
TV. There'll be some stuff on there with uh, Loco Negro or, or Young Chapo or Drummer Boy. And, you know, um, I stay busy even though you don't you don't hear my name. I'm kind of more like behind the scenes. I'm more into uh, engineering now. Like, I just kind of want – my son's doing some music too, you know. So, yeah. so I kind of engineer and record his stuff. And, you know, that I just stay busy just doing that whenever I get a chance, you know what I mean? Like I said, you hey, know, man, well, I got to go to work. You know? Well, I mean, if you ever, uh, if I know there's a lot of people out that 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 know of your music, that have heard of it, man, and I I know that you know you're busy doing that, but if you ever get the itch to get back into producing, man, let us know. We'll we'll play it here at the station. Oh, for sure, man. I I got tons of records. Like uh, uh, we'll we'll link up and and I'll show you what I got, uh, what I released, and all that stuff. You know, when I when I go your way, like. Yeah, we you know, still we still got to get you in here, man. We still got to get you in here. So let's uh, oh, let's sure. let's link up after this interview, man, and and figure out you know what what day works, and we'll get you in here and and do it live, man. You got it, man. All right, man. It, man. From the producer extraordinaire Ernie G, man. Thank you for being on the show, brother. All right, man. Thank you, bro. Peace, man. All right.